virtual author program at the Hudson Library and Historical Society. My name is Allison and I work in our adult services department and it is my pleasure to join um, with our co-authors tonight for a conversation about the Book of Rosie um, with Rosario Pablo Cruz and Julie Schweider Colazzo. The Book of Rosie, Cruz tells her story aided by Colazzo, founder of Immigrant Families Together, the grassroots organization that reunites mothers and children separated at the border. Let me introduce um, our speakers tonight. Rosario Pablo Cruz is the mother of four children. She owned a small clothing store in Guatemala before coming to the United States. Now living in New York, she is the co-president of her oldest son's parent teacher association, and she is active in her church and community. Um, and our co-author, Julie schweider Colazzo is a bi bilingual writer, editor, and translator. Her work has been featured in various media outlets, including Outside, Scientific American, Discover, Latina, The Guardian, and Time, and she has contributed to several books. Um, I do want to mention we have copies available of the Book of Rosie. Um, they, those will be available for purchase courtesy of our local bookstore in town, The Learned Owl. And there will be a link in the chat. If you're interested in purchasing a copy, you can just click on that link in the chat that will take you over to the Learned Owls website. Um, we would certainly welcome your questions for both of our authors tonight. If you have any questions that you would like to ask, please put them in the Q&A, not the chat. Um, and we will try to take as many questions as we can after our discussion tonight. So tonight's presentation is a little bit different than we've done before. This is our first ever um, bilingual presentation. Um, so we are excited to have both of you with us tonight and thank you so much for your time. We're excited to hear about your story. Thank you. Um, so as Allison was saying, um, we are going to have a bilingual conversation tonight. Rosie, and we were just saying before um, the session started that Rosie understands a lot of English, um, but finds speaking a little bit more challenging and is currently enrolled in IFT's ESL class. Um, so getting better every day, I think. Um, but we're going to speak to each other in Spanish and then I will translate into English. And then when we get to the Q&A portion, um, I will take your, we will take your questions in English and I'll translate them to her in Spanish and then translate her answers in Spanish back to you in English. Um, so I think it's worked out well for us in other book presentations on Zoom, so we will be fine. Um, we thought we would start tonight by telling you a little bit about, um, about IFT, Immigrant Families Together, the organization that I co-founded with my husband in 2018, um, because that's really the background for how Rosie and I met each other and then how ultimately we collaborated on the book. And then we can definitely talk a little bit about um, Rosie's reasons for uh, coming to the United States and her journeys to the United States and her um, life right now. I know, especially for folks who may have already read the book, um, one of the questions people always love to ask is how she and her family are doing right now. Um, so I'm sure that's a question she'd be happy to answer as well. So I'm just going to um, recap that for her and then we will get started. Rosy, entonces vamos a empezar. Um, yo voy a platicar un poquito sobre cómo formamos la organización de IFT, cómo eh, nosotras nos conocimos a través de la organización. Entonces podemos hablar de esa experiencia de conocernos en persona y también eh, de su, eh, sus razones para venir a los Estados Unidos con sus hijos y su experiencia de venir. Y entonces yo creo que eso nos va a llevar hasta más o menos a siete y media cuando vamos a tomar preguntas de la audiencia, si está bien. Sí, está bien. Ok. Um, so, I am a former social worker and my husband also has a background in um, counseling and social services. And we had left that field um, in 2003 and had moved to Puerto Rico and then to Mexico City um, for a total of about five years. And... Um, pursued completely different careers. I actually became a writer and a journalist and he became a photographer and a chef. And um, in 2018, when the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy was introduced officially, um, I think it's worth sort of putting a bookmark in that for a second 
to let folks know, if you didn't know, that the zero tolerance policy was actually piloted um, in El Paso starting in the fall of 2017. And our organization has actually worked with some families who were affected um, as early as November 2017 and separated from their children until February of 2020. Um, the zero tolerance policy, just to recap for you, was a policy that was offered up by the Trump administration as a deterrent to illegal immigration. Um, the thinking was that the zero tolerance policy, um, because it would separate parents and guardians from their children, that it would thereby discourage parents and guardians from coming to the United States with their children. Um, in my own opinion, and I think as history has certainly borne out, that um, that particular deterrent policy, but deterrent policies in general, simply do not work. Um, one of the things that Rosie and I have talked about and that we've talked about with other families at IFT is the fact that um, there's not really a choice. If you knew you were going to be separated from your children, uh, a lot of people have asked Rosie, for example, would you have still come to the United States? And for many families, there was only a choice between um, death or, or other deleterious things happening in their countries of origin to themselves and or to their children or um, separation. And in fact, one of the interesting um, uh, revelations or sort of understandings that um, really arose as Rosie and I were working on this book together was that um, the Trump administration, perhaps naively, perhaps arrogantly, thought that uh, this news that families were being separated would really trickle down throughout uh, specifically Central America. And that in fact was not the case. One of the things that we learned was that um, people were continually arriving in, in the United States at the border and they did not know that this policy was in effect. And so they were being separated um, from their children without having sort of any forethought or foresight that that could happen. As this policy was being implemented um, in the spring of 2018 and summer of 2018, um, I think like many people in the United States, my husband and I um, were really watching this on a day-by-day -day basis, wondering what we could do. Um, my husband is a refugee who came to the United States from Cuba uh, on a boat in 1980. And we have three uh, young children who are 11, eight and seven now. And um, I think for us then, we particularly felt um, the horror of this policy and the inhumanity of this policy and we're really conscious of the fact that we didn't want to sort of do something for the sake of doing something, but we really wanted to have a concrete, tangible impact um, in a way that was helpful and not harmful. And our initial idea was after I had heard a local attorney in New York on the radio talking about one of his clients who was also from Guatemala, as is Rosie, and was detained in the same uh, facility where Rosie was detained, Eloy in Arizona. Um, this attorney said, you know, this mother was separated from her three children. Uh, she does not have to continue to be separated. She needs to uh, have somebody pay her bond and she needs to be transported from Arizona to New York, which is where her children are in foster care. Um, if you're not aware, or maybe, um, maybe you are, but sort of the details of this, I think can be uh, maybe complicated or confusing for people who aren't up to their eyeballs in this every day. Um, what happened when families were separated is that the parents or the guardians, um, guardians could be aunts, uncles, grandparents, older siblings, other biological family members. Um, the adult family member was put into immigration detention, which is prison by any other name, and their children were taken to foster care facilities and then placed with foster care families. And often the children were taken very far away. So in the case of the first mother that we supported and also in the case of Rosie, she and this other mother were detained in Eloy in Arizona and their children were in foster care in New York City. Um, and so um, when we heard this attorney, I thought this is a really concrete thing we can do. My goal was not to start a nonprofit organization. It was really to support this one mother to raise bond for her, get her out of immigration detention and then get her from Arizona to New York and reunited with her children. What happened was, is that after I called the attorney and said, hi, I heard you on the radio, this is what we'd like to do, would that be okay? 
And he said, of course it would be okay because she has no other way to um, raise bond and get from Arizona to New York. Um, what happened was, is that the outpouring of support was so immense that we were able to continue posting bond for parents and reuniting them with their children. And so Rosie and I met because the outpouring of um, financial generosity and in, in terms of donations via GoFundMe, as well as people who were literally caravanning these mothers across the country to bring them back to their children, all volunteers who drove, who housed uh, mothers and other guardians, um, all of these people showed up and the support I think was really unexpected for us, but people saw that we could act quickly and they wanted to be a part of that. So many people wanted to respond to this inhumane policy. Rosie was the sixth mother for whom we posted bond. Um, and she was actually the first mother that we flew across the country instead of driving. Um, and the same day that she landed, she was reunited with her two sons. Um, she also has two daughters who remain in Guatemala who um, are currently going through a process of um, receiving the, the legal paperwork that they need to the, come to the United States. But as you can imagine, because of COVID, um, that has been delayed indefinitely, which has been a challenging experience for her. Um, and then I think so that we can break it up and I'm not the only person talking, let's maybe talk to Rosie for a few minutes about her, experience, her reasons and experience um, of coming to the United States. And then we'll talk a little bit about how uh, the book project developed. So, Rosy, acabo de explicar eh, las orígenes de la organización y cómo nos conocimos. Yo no sé si eh, te siente cómoda eh, explicando el, algo sobre el por qué vino, vino a los Estados Unidos con Jordi y con Fernando y la experiencia en llegar durante esa época de cero tolerancia. Sí, claro. Gracias, señora Yuli. Este, pues, mucho gusto. Mi nombre es Rosy, uh, Rosaira Pablo Cruz, pero más conocida como Rosy. Este, sí, para mí, eh, pues, las razones por las que eh, vine para, para este país, este, fue más que nada buscando este eh, una protección eh, para mi familia, para mí, dadas las circunstancias que ya yo había tenido atentados, este mi familia estaba siendo acosada, este siendo yo una madre soltera, viuda, porque también mataron a mi esposo, me vi obligada a, a venir a, al país a, buscando protección. Um, Rosie says, first of all, her name is Rosaira Pablo Cruz, um, better known as Rosie, especially because of the book. Um, the reasons that she came to the United States are because her family was in danger. Um, her husband had been murdered and there had actually been an attempt made against Rosie's own life. She was shot uh, in both of her arms um, and her family had been receiving threats. And so um, she felt that there was no choice except to flee to the United States. Sí, uh, pues, mi, mi meta era llegar al país y poder eh, buscar ese asilo que anhelaba tanto. Sin embargo, este, nunca podía o nunca podría estar preparada para lo que me esperaba cuando llegué. Este, sin duda, este, no ha sido fácil. Recordarlo me duele, me impacta todavía, porque es algo que insuperable, creo yo, este, de llegar al país y pues ser detenida y sobre todo este, ser separada de mi familia, de mis hijos, eh, a quienes yo traía supuestamente para protegerlos y al llegar aquí ellos este, fueron separados de mí, entonces me sentí impotente porque pues no podía... Eh, hacer nada en ese momento. Estaba en manos de la ley y ellos eran los que decidían por mis hijos y por mí en ese momento. Um, she says that she came here seeking asylum, um, as so many people hope that they will be able to receive. And instead, upon arriving, um, could not have even expected that she would be separated from her two sons um, in the manner that they were separated. And she said that it was an incredibly powerless feeling because all of the decisions, all of the communications were in the hands of, of immigration, of the law. Um, and so there was no ability to sort of um, 
to take her own um, her own um, ability to protect her children as she had hoped to do into her own hands. Sí, uh, también fue ha sido para mí tan difícil um, tratar de comprender la situación que llevó al presidente a separarnos porque lo he visto de muchas maneras para entender eh, esa situación y la verdad no la entiendo, eh, que ha sido no solo para mí, sino para muchas familias que hoy en día siguen separados de sus hijos, este, madres que aún no han recuperado a sus hijos, eso es tan impactante, um, a veces es difícil entender esa situación, pero... Lo que está en nuestras manos, este, para mí, es mm, siempre estar en oración y apoyar a quien lo necesita para poder eh, que esos niños vuelvan a, a, sus, a sus familias. Entonces, um, ha sido bien impactante para nosotros. Creo que es una historia demasiado larga para contar y emociones demasiado fuertes que a veces nos contenemos. Pero seguimos aquí, gracias a Dios, hemos tratado de, de hacer las cosas de lo, de lo mejor posible. Hemos conseguido, personalmente he conseguido el asilo. Mis hijos están en un proceso todavía, pero confiando en Dios que todo se va a resolver de la mejor manera. Um, Rosie says that it's really difficult, if not impossible, to understand why this family separation policy was put into place um, ever at all. And that what is more chilling is the fact that there are families that remain separated uh, from that time period. Um, and there's a, a continuing pain thinking about those families and knowing that they're still separated um, uh, because of the cruelty of this policy. In her own case, she said that she was granted asylum. Her sons are still in the process, actually, of um, of having their cases uh, reviewed again because of COVID everything has slowed down um, and said that she really believes that above all that um, her own faith in God and praying to God is really crucial for helping her cope with the um, consequences, the long-term emotional effects of this experience, but also in terms of thinking about those families that remain separated. Sí. Um Igual, este, creo que son caminos muy difíciles de, de, de recorrer, este, de entender también. Um, yo sigo, sigo en mi batalla, sigo en mi lucha. Quisiera decir que esto para mí ha pasado, pero no es así. Como madre sigo muy dolida, este, porque igual tengo mis dos hijas que los procesos son tan difíciles. Ellas aún no, no han recibido una una información o, o por lo menos algo siento que para mí es difícil esperar han pasado ya más de tres años y eso es tan difícil para mí um, son temas muy como madre muy difíciles de, de hablarlos pero sigo confiando yo sigo confiando de que ellas van a venir y pues gracias a Dios Ayer recibí la noticia de que puedo ya aplicar para la residencia permanente de mis hijos aquí, los que están aquí, y eso me ha llenado de, de alegría, de, de creer que Dios sigue trabajando en, en mi vida. Para mí es, es algo especial y, y dentro de todas las cosas malas, siento que siempre hay cosas buenas que vienen a alegrar nuestra vida. Um, Rosie's saying that as a mother, um, there remains a challenge for her of waiting for her two daughters who are in Guatemala, um, again, awaiting this process to be able to come legally to the United States um, and saying that it's just really difficult because it's been three years now that there's not really a lot of progress. There's not a, not a lot of communication and sort of um, letting her or her family know where the process is in terms of its trajectory. Um, and that that's just really difficult as a mom. She said, on the other hand, for her two sons who are here with her, she just received notice yesterday that they can apply for permanent residency. 
So um, there's a lot of joy in the midst of all of these other difficulties. Um, and that the um, sequelae of the, the experience of being separated continues um, to remain an issue that they all are dealing with um, continuously. Uh, Rosie, cuando yo fui a visitar a Jenny hace un mes, ¿no? Y ella me dijo que está en, en la terapia, ¿no? Está, tiene una consejera y me dijo que es una buena experiencia que le ayuda a sentirse un poquito más ligera, ¿no? Pero dice, me dijo algo que me impresionó tanto y me, me dejó pensando también en usted y en toda la familia con quien hemos eh, trabajado. Me dijo, espero que un día yo puedo superar esto. Y yo dije a ella, porque como yo era una terapeuta, yo dije, pero si la meta no es superarla, sino integrarla, ¿no? Porque es una, una cosa que uno no puede superar, ¿no? Es una cosa que hay que darle el, el espacio que ocupó en la vida y honrar eh, el horror que pasaban. No honrarlo, sino darte cuenta de que tuvo lugar. Y eso no es algo que uno puede superar, sino integrar en, en la tela de la vida, ¿no? Y seguir adelante. Y yo le dije, en el caso ahí, también en el caso suyo, yo le dije, yo creo que si, si, si se puede pensar en los últimos tres años y todo lo que ha logrado en ese tiempo, eh, lo que sí debe de resaltar, ¿no? Es eh, su fuerza como una mujer, como una madre, ¿no? todo que lo ha logrado y para mí esa es y, y la integridad que tienen sus hijos y sus logros, por ejemplo, los logros académicos, ¿no? los logros en la comunidad, los logros sociales. Yo creo que eso habla de, del poder humano de integrar, no superar eh, lo que ha pasado. ¿no? Um, le voy a traducir rápidamente. I was just saying to Rosie that about a month ago, I went to visit the first mom that IFT posted bond for that um, uh, Rosie was detained with. Her name is Jenny. And um, Jenny was saying to me that she's in therapy and that she um, feels that therapy is really useful for her. It helps her feel like she's able to sort of uh, unburden herself in some ways. And she was saying, I hope that one day I'm going to be able to overcome this experience and all of the pain that it left with me. And I said to her, as a former therapist, I said, what if the goal isn't to overcome it, but to integrate it into your life, to, to give it the place that it deserves in your life for all of the pain that it's caused, but also to look over the past three years and, and see how much you have achieved and how much you've struggled and fought and how at the end of all of this, that in spite of this really horrific experience um, and, the, and the ongoing consequences that it has, you've managed to wring out of, out of everything the ability to go on and the ability for your children to be doing amazingly well in school and in their community as well. So, yo no sé si quiere comentar al respecto. Sí, este, pues lo mismo que usted dice, este, pienso que, que son etapas de la vida que, que uno tiene que ir sacando el, el, lo positivo, porque a pesar de que las cosas han, no han sido como uno quiere, tienen su lado positivo. Yo siempre le digo a mis hijos, este, um, a Jordi principalmente, que es un adolescente, yo siempre le digo, no te estanques. Un obstáculo se pasa y sigue, avanza. Porque sí es bueno mirar atrás, pero como una reflexión de que sí pude, voy a poder con lo que viene. Para mí ha sido un poco difícil este, venir arrastrando este tiempo, y digo que lo vengo arrastrando porque no estoy con mis hijas, entonces es como que estoy todavía partida del corazón, pero confío que ellas van a venir. Y entonces yo, yo tampoco me pongo a llorar con ellas, les muestro mi, mi, mi apoyo, mi positivismo, le digo vamos a estar pronto, pronto, no sé cuánto pronto, pero yo confío que va a ser pronto. Entonces sí, creo que lo más importante es, es avanzar, es avanzar y pues lo que pasó duele a veces recordar, pero... Um, pero como fue un recuerdo que ya pasó y ya lo que venga, que sea, este, que sea bien. Y si es 
y si es algo difícil, pues superarlo de, de nuevo, porque no podemos hacer otra cosa. Um, pero sí pienso lo mismo. Super, o sea, uno no lo va superando, pero uno aprende a vivir con las cosas que han pasado en la vida. Rosie was saying that she agrees that um, one doesn't really overcome the, the difficult things that have happened, but finds a way to integrate them into your life and to reflect on them and to learn from that and to move on. Um, that the difficulties of the past can't be changed, but that we can learn from them and, and go forward. And that that's a lesson for her, um, both in her life uh, before coming to the United States and the experience of family separation that she's tried particularly to convey to her oldest son, Jordi, who's a teen. Um, and that in the case of her daughters, that she's saying, you know, I, I don't know um, when you'll be here and when we'll be together again but trying to always also maintain a positive attitude and maintain hope um, for the future and what's to come while honoring what's happened to you in the past and giving it its place. Um, I want to talk for just a few minutes before we open up to Q&A about how the book um, came to be and how we wrote it together because I know that's something that's often interesting to people. Entonces, Rosy, ¿puedes explicar um, rápido eh, cómo evolucionó el libro? Y entonces vamos a abrir para preguntas. Um, so I uh, have had and have a literary agent, Scott Mendel, um, who is now also Rosie's literary agent, who reached out to me. Um, he was already my agent, but after an article appeared in the New York Times about the organization um, that Francisco and I started, um, Scott reached out to me and said, you know that you need to write a book proposal about this. And the original proposal that I sent him was about the organization. We were really, um, with the exception of Francisco, we're really a group of mothers primarily um, uh, who were really organizing um, without necessarily any financial resources or any um, particular experience in the field of immigration with the exception I had some experience with immigration uh, from my work as a social worker. Um, and Scott came back to me after I sent that proposal to him and said, this is just, this is not the right thing. If you really care about advancing the, um, if you really care about advancing awareness around the issue of immigration and in specifically um, the zero tolerance policy and its negative impact, um, you really need to tell this story with someone else and principally with someone who's affected by this policy. And um, we talked about that. And I said, you know, from the perspective of the director and co-founder of an organization, I said it's really difficult to sort of choose one person or focus on one person as part of this project. And we talked about uh, different folk stories. And he said he really felt that Rosie's story was most representative of sort of the full trajectory um, that would be um, helpful to readers in understanding, first of all, why people leave their countries of origin. Uh, to seek asylum in the United States, and then also about the experience of separation and of rebuilding a life. And I think that's um, the last part of the book is really focused on the life that Rosie and her sons are building in the United States, which of course is a story that's still in progress. Um, and I think that he was absolute, in retrospect, he was absolutely right. Um, I think I was so fortunate to be able to work with Rosie. We were already friends. Um, we both live in New York. Um, we have kids around the same age, and I think it was just um, a really beautiful experience um, for me because she's an incredibly generous storyteller. Um, the stories of her life sort of came out um, very whole. There wasn't a lot of elaboration. My work was really in helping decide um, how is the story sort of shaped and structured in a way that gives the impact of that full trajectory of her life. Um, in a way that is most um, accessible to a general reader. And so um, I think that also that I am absolutely conscious of the fact that this was a tremendous gift. Um, I think one of the things that we've certainly seen at IFT is that families um, have told their stories so often and in so many different ways, and the stories have often been used against them. And this has certainly been the case in the context of uh, contact with immigration and in the context of their asylum cases. Um, so that to tell your story again, honestly and fully, um, sort of without reservation is a risk. 
and it's a massive gift as well. Um, and so um, I have always been very grateful to Rosie that she shared that with me, but also with a reading public. And she has always said that for her, it was very important to do that because she wanted to help contextualize also the stories of parents who remained in detention. Um, and so that's really how the book came about. So I think we can start taking some of your questions. And I know that one of the first questions was um, for Rosie. Rosie, la primera pregunta es, eh, ¿cuántos años tiene cada uno de sus hijos? Um, bueno, tengo uh, cuatro niños. El primero tiene 19, recientemente los cumplió en julio. Este, tengo la niña que está en Guatemala, dos niñas que están en Guatemala, una que tiene 14 años y la otra tiene 12. El pequeño que tiene 8 años. 19, 14, 12, and 8. Uh, Jordi is 19. He just turned 19 in July, and he is the oldest child who is with her in New York. Fernando, the youngest, is eight and is also with her in New York. And then the two in the middle are her daughters who are in Guatemala with her family. La segunda pregunta es, uh, ¿cómo se están adaptando eh, a la vida en Nueva York? <laughs> Una pregunta bueno, compleja. <laughs> sí. Bueno, hay mucho que decir pero puedo resumirlo a que hemos tenido una vida más tranquila eh, en el sentido eh, de, de seguridad, de no tener temor, eh, carrereada porque es una ciudad, pero somos muy adaptables, agradezco a Dios que mis hijos y yo estamos bien y nos hemos adaptado muy bien a toda la ciudad, casi la conocemos toda. Sí. I remember that. Um, she was saying that um, she and her sons have adapted uh, really well to life in New York City, that it's hurried and harried because it's a city, of course. But in terms of safety and security, um, they absolutely feel that. And she said that she feels like they know almost all of the city, which I would say is absolutely true. Um, one of the, the joys of being her friend is that I get to see on Facebook all of their adventures around New York and some of my favorites. Or, uh, les voy a contar rápidamente sobre el, el, el casado de hongos. <laughs> um, Rosie live, and her sons lived for a while um, with um, a woman on the Upper East Side of Manhattan who had an extra apartment in her building. And she's a member of a mushroom foraging club. And so one of the earliest activity, it was literally the day after, well, the day that they moved in with her, she said, do you want to go mushroom foraging with me tomorrow? And they were all like, what? Do I want to do what? And they did, and they've since become members of a mushroom foraging club, and they go all over the city foraging mushrooms, but they also spend a lot of time in Times Square and have seen uh, New York City's newest park, Little Island, and so always exploring all that New York City has to offer, which is an amazing thing to see. Um, Rosie, la próxima pregunta es, ¿qué es lo que le inspiró a usted a compartir su historia y sus experiencias a través del libro? Bueno, lo que me inspiró a compartir eh, mi, mi historia fue, este, fueron las compañeras que estaban conmigo en la detención en Iloy, ver con impotencia, no poder hacer nada por ellas, este, sentía que tenía, alguien tenía que hablar y, y si yo tenía la oportunidad lo iba a hacer, entonces este, ellas fueron mi inspiración porque atrás de las rejas se viven muchas cosas que muchas tienen miedo de decirlo por una u otra razón y otras no, no tienen la oportunidad, entonces yo no iba a desaprovechar esta oportunidad de hacerlo. Um, she said that um, really the, the main reason that she felt inspired to share her story was because through the book she had the opportunity to really uh, represent the voices and experiences of women who had been detained with her and who remained in detention it was really important for her. And we've also heard this from other mothers who wanted um, to speak to press um, to share their story and to make sure that the women who were still in detention 
and who had not been reunited with their children um, were still being reminded that they were remembered and that they, that the sort of the broad strokes of their story were uh, coming through in her own story as well. Um, <clears throat> la próxima pregunta es, ¿cuál es la, el aprendizaje más importante que aprendió a través del escribir el libro? ¿Y qué piensa su familia de su, de su escritura, de su libro? Bueno, este, creo que lo más importante que he aprendido del de libro es que, eh, es que hay mucha humanidad todavía, hay personas que todavía tienen esa, o sea, tenemos esperanza en la humanidad, ver la respuesta con la que muchos han, han um, quizá han transformado de alguna manera su, su forma de ver este, a, a las personas eh, latinas que venimos en, en circunstancias este, ilegales, como, de, como dicen. Este, eh, y mi familia, ellos este, pues me dicen que a pesar de que han, han vivido, han, o sea, estuvieron conmigo en muchas circunstancias de la vida, ellos nunca se imaginaron este, mi forma de sentir, porque siempre este, han visto que he sido una mujer muy fuerte, pero quizá eso ha sido eh, eh, una forma de, de sobrellevar mi situación, tener un caparazón de que soy muy fuerte, este, pero este, sí, ellos también han aprendido de que, de que para mí no ha sido tan fácil como ellos lo han, lo han visto. Um, she said that really the most important lesson that she's learned through the book is that there's still humanity, um, that there's still good people. And that really the experience of having contact with readers who've reflected upon her story um, and who have maybe had a change of understanding or a change of heart about um, people who come to the United States seeking asylum, especially Latinos, and sort of um, rethinking what illegal immigration is. Um, in the case of her family and what they think about her writing, which I think is a great question, nobody's ever asked that in a Zoom um, book event before. Um, she said that she felt like the book, by the way, was published in English and in Spanish simultaneously, which does not happen all that often. Um, Harper One published the book in English and Harper Collins Espanol published the book in Spanish at the same time. Um, so it is available in both languages. <clears throat> and so um, her family, she said, has really learned through the book that maybe life hasn't been as easy for her as, uh, as maybe they thought that it was. Um, that even though they have been with her through many different experiences in life, that the experience of uh, reading the book gave them some insight into, into her own experiences and into her personality that maybe they didn't um, understand before and helped them really understand exactly how strong she is. Um, Rosie, the audience member, I'm sorry, one of the audience members asked uh, why, why did Rosie not take her daughters with her when she came to the U.S.? That was the one I was going to ask next. Um, Rosie, una persona le gustaría saber eh, por qué no llevaba eh, a, a las hijas eh, a los Estados Unidos. Porque en ese momento este, yo estaba viendo quién era el que estaba eh, en peligro y en peligro estaba mi hijo mayor que era Jordi um, pues a él le habían ya cerrojeado un arma en, en frente eh, necesitaba sacarlo él era el que estaba siendo perseguido um, a Fernando no lo podía dejar porque era demasiado pequeño para que mi familia se hiciera cargo de él este, entonces tenía que llevarlo. Fue una decisión muy difícil, sin embargo, este, para mí era en ese momento quien este, um, necesitaba salir. No es fácil para una madre decidir y hasta hoy a veces me siento que soy una madre que quizá, no sé si tomé una decisión muy, muy mala, pero era lo que tenía en ese momento. Sí. Um, she says that... Um for a mother to, to choose among your children is very, very difficult. And the, the matrix of decision-making around that was really who was in greatest danger at that time. Uh, her oldest son 
um, was actively being threatened and then had actually um, a gun brandished at him. Um, so the urgency around his um, being taken out of Guatemala was particularly acute and she felt that she could not leave her youngest son. Um, but she said that it's a decision that um, is really haunting over the long term because it's difficult to know if you've made the right decision. And of course, to leave anybody behind is always um, is very challenging. But the um, thought of traveling with all four children um, as a single mother without anyone else um, just was not a possibility. Um, eh, alguien ha preguntado si puede platicar un poquito sobre la reunión con Jordi y Fernando después de estar separados. Um, pues ese momento para mí fue algo maravilloso. Eh, creo que fue, fue, o sea, volverlos a, a tener como cuando uno los, los tiene cuando son bebés, nacen. Eso fue para mí, es de volverlos a tener, fue una, algo indescriptible. Este, realmente para mí fue uno de los momentos más emocionantes porque pues ya los había sentido como perdidos y los volví a encontrar. Yo sé que quizá a veces es un poquito incomprensible, pero, pero fue una emoción, fue lleno de emociones ese momento. Para mí fue este, básicamente la luz volverlos a tener. Um, I love this answer and I wish that uh, it was in the book. Um, she said that to, to be reunited with them was like giving birth to them all over again. Um, that when you think that you've lost your children, that they're, that they're gone, that you may not see them again. Um, to see them again after expecting that you might not is to feel uh, like a rebirth of sorts. Um, Le gustaría saber cómo apoya a sí misma y, y a sus hijos. Y una pregunta relacionada es, eh, ¿dónde vive en la ciudad de Nueva York y si está trabajando? Y bueno, voy a guardar la otra pregunta para después. Este, bueno, eh, ha sido, para mí fue un poquito difícil en el momento que yo no tenía este permiso de trabajo, pero... Cuando lo recibí, eh, pues luego vino la pandemia, eso fue para mí complicado. Este, pero ahora, gracias a Dios, he conseguido un trabajo de 20 horas a la semana, este, que por lo menos este, me va ayudando para solventar algunos gastos, pues la ciudad es un poquito cara para vivir. Pero pues gracias a Dios, este, ahí estoy eh, sobrellevando la situación. Mi hijo todavía no puede trabajar porque no tiene el permiso, entonces este, estamos, o sea, es, sigo ahí luchando y yo sé que, bueno, más que todo por la gracia de Dios hemos salido adelante. Um, so somebody had asked about um, how she's supporting herself and her children. Um, she was saying that initially it was very challenging because um, she did not have a work permit, which is certainly the case for all of the families that we work with. And uh, Rosie, like several other families that we support in New York, um, actually happened to get their work permit just as COVID was hitting the city and the city was shutting down, which was extremely unfortunate because uh, nearly everybody got their work permit and also had a job lined up. And literally within one to two weeks, um, everything shut down. But at now, at present, she has um, a job uh, that's 20 hours a week that allows her to be able to support herself in this very expensive city. And she was saying that, unfortunately, Jordy does not yet have his work permit, um, but would like to be able to, to work also once he does. Um, and that really, it's through the grace of God that she's been able to uh, maintain herself right now. Um, Abby, I know that you had asked where in New York you're living. Um, they live in the Bronx right now, lived in Manhattan um, until about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. Um, and then, um, Rosie, otra pregunta fue, eh, ¿qué piensa sobre la cultura de Guatemala y otros países en la región? Eh, bueno, como guatemalteca, <laughs> considero que para, pues, para mí, mi cultura, este, es muy, muy hermosa, algo que extraño, 
Este, sin embargo, y he sido una persona que me encanta conocer eh, otros lugares, me encanta este, adaptarme y, y me gusta conocer otras culturas. Entonces, este, no ha sido tan difícil para nosotros este, a, adaptarnos. Pero sin duda, como uno como nativo de, de su lugar, que ahí donde yo nací y crecí por tanto tiempo, este, para mí ha sido este, difícil y extraño mucho la cultura de, bueno, mi cultura. Y en cuanto al futuro del, del país, hablando de política, inmigración, las razones por las cuales la gente se van del país, ¿tiene esperanzas para el futuro en ese aspecto? Quisiera ser positiva. Pero complicado. <risas> Quisiera decir que sí, pero tristemente la situación va de mal en peor. Sí. En estos tiempos, hoy mismo, pues, te puedo decir que uh, dos meses atrás, de dos meses atrás para acá, han venido una serie de asesinatos de, de a diestra y siniestra. Entonces hay, hay muchos enfrentamientos eh, de, de los narcos peleando territorio este, y entonces mucha gente inocente está perdiendo la vida. Es triste. Y las autoridades no se aparecen. Entonces esto no lo pinto tan bien y es por eso que muchos buscamos la forma de salir de nuestro país. Um, so one of Abby's questions was, what do you think the future is for Guatemala and similarly situated countries in the region? Um, before, um, I asked that Rosie was talking a little bit about, um, how proud she is to be Guatemalan and how important her culture is to her and how beautiful it is to her. And also how she loves learning about and being in different cultures. And so, um, there is also an interest in sort of adapting and acculturating, uh, here in the United States. In terms of um, what the future is for Guatemala, she was saying that while she um, would like to say something more positive, she actually feels that things have gotten worse uh, since she left, that um, particularly over the past two months in Guatemala, there's been a resurgence in drug-motivated killings. There have been a lot of assassinations um, that are occurring without Im with impunity and that um, the authorities just aren't even present. So um, not a lot of hope for um, this Guatemala particularly or the region at this moment. Um, eh, Rosy, hay un comentario de, de una participante que se llama Joe, dice que lamenta mucho que el gobierno ha, le ha puesto en esta situación y espera que pronto estará reunido con la familia entera y que no ha leído su libro aún, pero definitivamente eh, lo hará. Y por último, una pregunta de Gwen, y ella eh, le gustaría saber eh, cómo piensa sus amistades en Guatemala sobre su salida del país. Bueno, este, hay, hay muchas... Mmm, mucho, muchos comentarios eh, apoyando y muchos en contra, este, como en todo, creo yo. Lo que pasa es que cuando uno está viviendo este, persecución, cuando uno está pasando una situación eh, difícil, eh, es, no es muy recomendable vivir eh, hablando de, de la situación que está pasando y es en este punto en que la gente muchas veces no cree lo que... Lo que lo que está pasando porque no lo han vivido este pero uno no habla esto muchas veces ni con las autoridades porque las autoridades mismas están incluidas en esto entonces es un temor de que uno tiene desconfianza de todo quien lo rodea y entonces debido a esto mucha gente eh, siempre va a estar como como incrédula a lo que pasa mientras no les llegue a ellos el, la situación pero otras personas que están, este, pues están agradecidas este, y que los que han sido más allegados y han conocido están felices porque yo esté acá. Incluso me han dicho, preferimos tenerla lejos, pero que esté bien. She was saying this is a really complicated uh, issue because in Guatemala, um, people often don't talk, even among friends, about the 
dangers that they had faced or have faced or the threats that have been made to them or even in her case for example uh, the physical attacks that people have experienced or survived um, and so there's sort of this culture of of silence and so um people may not understand necessarily um, one person's specific reasons for leaving because they're just not even aware of what's happened to that person. And when they find out about it, there's this sort of degree of incredulity. On the other hand, um, she was saying that people who are aware of that um, understand and are um, supportive and say things like, you know, we would rather have you far from us and alive than here with us and, and in danger. So um, both of those dynamics are, are true. All right. It looks like that wraps up our questions. Thank you both so much for your time tonight. We really appreciated that both of you were able to join us, um, for our virtual program tonight. I think, um, our, our audience definitely had some interesting questions and I really hope that all of you will take the opportunity to read the book of Rosie. It's really um, an inspiring and courageous story of just one woman's attempt at um, finding asylum in the U.S. And hopefully, um, hopefully your story, Rosie, will inspire others to do the same. Um, so thank you both tonight for your time. And of course, thank you to our audience for for joining us for our virtual programs. We have a lot of exciting virtual programs coming up, especially in September and October. Um, if you wanna see what our lineup is for author programs, you can visit our website, hudsonlibrary.org and sign up for any of our virtual programs, which will all be hosted on Zoom through the fall. So thank you all for joining us tonight and thank you both. I hope everyone has a lovely night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Gracias. Thank you.